for Smithy Smith and Joshua Jat Leesman. Gentlemen, it's great to have you here for what should be a pretty amazing matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's once again LPL versus LCK. Usually this goes to the LCK, but it has on occasion gone over to the LPL. So it's one of the most looked forward to matchups. Yeah, hype not necessary. This should be a really high level game. I've actually been surprised. There haven't been the fun picks in the 5v5s. This has been very much serious. It's been a great intro to 623. And now we get to see two of the best teams on the rift. Yeah, even in the 1v1s, it was really just today with the Faker v Mata Yasuo duel that we saw kind of the fan service, yeah. let's take this fun, rather than just trying to win. And I'd actually say Mata uh, was almost straight up trolling yesterday <laughs> in their game against the GPL, taking the Rift Herald as support, uh, dying as a marksman mode. Well, we'll see if he does it again, because let's zoom in on our, our contenders. First up, it is the LPL All-Stars representing Team Ice. In the top lane, there's Mouse, the jungle at Clear Love, Wayless in mid, Uzi, AD Carry, and Mata. That big troll himself is the support. Yeah. On the other side, their opposition from Team Fire. It's Korea's LCK. Star-sided lineup in the top lane. It's Smeb, Bengi in the jungle. Faker is your mid laner. Prey at AD Carry, and of course, Mad Life at support. Yeah, and we want to see, you know, Faker and Bengi potentially playing the last tournament together. Prey, as well, had some pretty strong games. Like, there's just, obviously, in an all-star event like this, some pretty good players on the line, and I'm hoping to see a close competitive game where we can really see some mechanics and playmaking come out. I mean, coming to 2017, you kind of have that other storyline where four out of these five players on the LCK side, of course, Mada, moving teams in the LCK. It's going to be a lot of upheaval on the national level, but now they're representing that nation, putting that all aside, and it should be fun. And it was kind of interesting to see what these two teams brought yesterday because I think things we expect to see is what we expect from the regions themselves. Korea, very disciplined, still playing that heavy rotation style and using those mechanics. And the LPL was almost a throwback. They were back to straight up chaotic team fighting. It's true. I mean, the LCK game against the LMS yesterday almost felt like a Worlds game for a lot of it, especially at the end when Korea won. Uh, that was very Worlds-like, but really, LCK didn't take any chances with their team composition yesterday. They picked Behemoth Team Fighting Team, and we'll see if they do something similar today. Well, first Ben Rai is going to start things off. Actually, a Rengar ban there from the LCK. So expecting a lot of mid lane fire here. Rek'Sai, though, will be the return. A signature champion of Clear Love going to get taken away from Bengi and LeBlanc as these bans are going very quickly. I wondered if Team Ice is going to be tricky about the LeBlanc. Wayless, very well known Diana player, and Diana versus LeBlanc is one of the matchups that still works out, but. Safe to just ban it away, probably would have been first pick. There's been a lot of LeBlanc today. No Katarina bans so far, though. Yeah, Katarina has been banned in a lot of games, but specifically, Faker played against it yesterday, and while Maple did get a few kills, it was ineffectual in the overall story of the game, so wouldn't expect to see them ban that here. In general, a decent amount of stuff left up. Karma, the last ban from the LPL, so taking a support away. LCK going to take their time, and another support will get banned away with Zyra, so a lot of that mid lane really opened up, and Syndra, the most obvious thing left open. And it's also a blocker pick for the Katarina. It's very difficult lane, not impossible, but very difficult to play the Katarina into Syndra, especially because the balance level at the moment, even if you don't hit all the spheres, the ultimate still will do most of the damage, so Syndra first pick, definitely comfort for Wayless. Yeah, and a lot of power picks are left up, obviously, uh, even with the first pick, Cinder Nautilus and Poppy have been the two premier top laners because of Courage of the Colossus and their ability to proc it so easily. And then I think Lee Sin is actually the best jungler on this patch, even though we see Rengar and Rek'Sai bans because of the options he has early in the jungle. One of the interesting trivia points about Bengi is that when you think about his past, you think of his Elise, maybe in the more recent days, Nunu way back. His actual most played champions, not Jarvan's, not Elise, not Nunu, it is Lee Sin. Even if his mechanics weren't great at Worlds, didn't play a lot of it during the, the year, it is a champion that is associated with him because he's played so much of it. So it's still comfort, and as you mentioned, Jet, power on 623. Yeah, and it's so much of the versatility. People do love to kind of criticize Bengi's mechanics so often, but he's still one of the best Lee Sins in the world when he's playing the game. He's not necessarily the fastest player you've ever seen with the combos, but he still pulls them off, he still has the right gank pass, and he can utilize all of the skills. Well, set up here for LCK. They oh, took Nautilus for the top. I love it. Thresh locked in though, and Poppy left open is kind of interesting, but this is Marta going to make a statement. So we saw yeah. Marta make a statement in the 1v1s. He beat Faker, of course. There's certain mind games around that. Now he took the Thresh, and I was actually speaking to Jet, and I was remembering Pickaboo specifically, who loved to take Thresh, take E, show up in mid lane at level one, and try and throw off the mid lane. As Marta, after beating Faker in a 1v1, what better thing to do than go for that level one drive by and try and throw up the guard in the mid lane? And he's gonna do it. Faker actually locks in. Oh Ari boy, and the, on the Twitch. 
This is uh, comfort yeah. and also champions that's synonymous with Faker and Prey. Yeah, I actually think the Ari's a pretty good champion on this patch as well. Substantial wave clear. And I think it's a pretty good pick into Syndra. Yasuo would have been as well, even if that's just a hover from the 1v1. And interestingly, during Worlds, Faker was prepping the Ari pick. Played a lot of it in solo queue. Went a very interesting build. He changed it towards the end, but he was starting off going uh, Hextech GOP into Lich Bane. That was kind of the crazy build he went for. The Ari is very strong with the new Catalyst as well for sustain. We talked about comfort and synonymous champions. Evelyn's already locked we in. Do the vein. I mean, yeah, Evelyn's there. I'm kind of thinking, uh, come on, Uzi. Join the club, have a little fun. I mean, Ezreal's a big champion for him as well, but no champion says Uzi quite like Vayne. Yeah, unfortunate, uh. unlucky that he picks the Ezreal. Uh, he might have to do that if he thinks Mata's never going to be with him in the bottom lane <laughs> on Thresh. So he's going to be able to have to play a little bit safe. And he's up against the Twitch, so it's tough. And Mad Life's known for his hook champions. He actually played the support Nautilus yesterday. Smeb has played plenty of it in top, so they can flex. Looks like it will be the flex, because looking like Nautilus top, although Tom Kench has been playing the top lane as recently as IWC All-Stars. So actually, sure. if they do lock in the Tom Kench, it is still a lot of uh, we have to wait to that 20-second mark to work out where they're going. Yeah, Tom Kench is also really good against Cinder, just in the overall team composition. Going up against the Poppy, I think either one of them could work. As we mentioned, LCK did play the Nautilus support yesterday, even though it looked like they would be playing the Nautilus top lane, since that's what everyone else was doing. But Smash played plenty of Nautilus in his past, so I don't see uh, any harm with him taking a top lane. Yeah, it was kind of interesting to see them take Nautilus over Poppy. That was the kind of obvious pick for Mouse. It was playing in a world. It's definitely on a buff with Courage of the Colossus, but looks like LCK will round things out with the Tom Kench pick, and we'll see exactly where the lanes go out. But you know, a little bit of fun here and there, but teams, you can tell, still a very competitive draft from both of them. I mentioned it. First time between Wayless and Faker. Mid laners that have been around for years, but just never been able to take it on the rift. And this is very much a skill matchup between the two, and that's what makes it oh so much sweeter. Exactly. Hoping we're seeing the GLP to Lich Bane yep. build out of the Yari, only because we were prepping that at Worlds, because that we thought that because was Cinder was such a perfect band Syndra. that he would be playing it against Cinder. Finally able to break it out here. Faker spent so much time trying to find these specific champions for matchups that other people want to either just completely dodge or think are unbeatable. So I really hope we get to see that unless Mata decides to sit mid and screw it up for us. But that's what I love about SKT in particular is they try and find strategies against the OPs. They don't just auto ban and solo queue like people were doing for Syndra. They want to say, okay, if there's a scenario where we can't ban the Syndra for some strategic region, reason, sorry, we have an answer to it. Well, it should be certainly a whole lot of fun. As Faker has certainly always been an innovator. Don't forget that, guys, though, you can vote at LL Esports, either hashtag Firewind or hashtag Icewind, depending on which teams and or regions you are cheering for. It should be one hell of a game, though, as the LPL will once again clash heads with the LCK. Jack, you said it already, LCK favored historically, but it is All-Stars. There's supposed to be mayhem. Anything could happen in our best of one. Hey, man, the last time Clear Love beat Korea in an international event oh, was that boy. Game going 5 there again. Evelyn going MSI there again. 2015 <laughs> against Bengi, by the way. It was Bengi's new new, a little bit different. And technically, they took a game off of Korea uh, last year at Worlds after losing the first <laughs> two. But uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. Well, we'll have to see how it all shakes out. A little bit of luck here and there as far as the picks go. A little sad to not see Uzi on the vein, but we'll have to settle for the Ezreal that ravaged poor North America in the recent group stage. But we are out onto Summoner's Rift here. LPL representing Team Ice will roll out, and we'll see kind of how the level one shake out. Yeah, a year and a half ago at MSI, we love brought Evelyn back into the meta, was played quite a bit at the start of summer season in 2015. It's been seen a lot in solo queue. It definitely does have, is one of those power junglers. Deficio at the start of the tournament was talking about the fact that there is kind of eight junglers right now, maybe 10 that are kind of viable in the new jungle. Yeah. And Evelyn, especially if you can play around that Evelyn, really is one of those picks for sure. Yeah, and obviously Evelyn has always had the camouflage mechanic. Twitch is another one that can utilize that now. It just makes it really difficult to ward properly in the early game. It necessitates earlier control wards and the vision radius on the control wards is actually very small so it's very difficult to cut off Evelyn with any early paths and the best way you keep track of her actually if you're Bengi is to early invade the jungle and try and start fighting early and that also lets you keep pace of the camps that the Evelyn has killed and can help you track that one. Yeah the battle ward strategy of just seeing the Evelyn contesting 
the camps, but also just warding camps will let you know when they're cleared and then give you a, a pretty good indication of which side of the map they're on. Because with the long respawn times, effectively, you can get a pretty good idea if the everyone's just camping a lane. Well, no huge surprises on the Keystone Mastery front. Do have Courage of the Colossus on Thresh, which is maybe a slight surprise. But Uzi going to go for the favor of battle as well. Definitely favoring a bit more aggression versus Praise Warlords. Leash on the red buff as well. Clearly, we'll get quite a lot of help. This happened on the Rengar recently, so clearly something practiced for the team. Yeah, I really like this if your dual lane is willing to give you the extra second so you can save your smite for the next camp. It allows you to power to level three much faster. And as you can see, they didn't actually miss any creeps in the lane, so they're going to miss out potentially on the early push. But even now, they're actually not because Bray and Madelife weren't willing to push early. So really, no harm done. and just helps clear up jungle. And just to your point about the Courage of the Colossus Thresh, the reason why it's become the norm is because when you enter in, specifically the Q, and as you see, the play are both procking the Courage of the Colossus. So Thresh wants to go in isn't tanky at the early game, but can get that extra shielding to facilitate the engage. And no level one room from Marta, but some aggression certainly early on here at level one as Uzi just zoning them off this creep wave. Yeah, and I also kind of want to touch on the junglers because everyone was talking about how the red buff to Krug's level three and then gank was just this super OP strategy, but we haven't really seen any of that at All-Star. And that's just because the counter jungle afterwards would be so obvious. If both guys do the same thing and one shows for the gank, it completely exposes the blue side of their jungle and you can completely counter jungle and get like a basically two level lead. And the other kind of tip of the hand is they entered lane a bit later than you would expect. They just rushed to lane, so they know that Evelyn started on the bot side. So just that extra bit of information to play a little bit safer. That's why they gave up a level two as well. And on the back foot, as you'd expect in a Tom Kench. Hook not quite there, but Uzi continuing to apply pressure. Mata will dip down to the left and award. But my Life Empire will pick up what CS they can. As you can see, just a bit of extra vision there. Looks like Bengi is on this side of the map. Clearly on the opposite there towards the left and top lane. So we'll see if the junglers do want to influence some of these lanes. And looks like Syndra's pushing up as well. So pretty standard so far. A bit interesting that Bengi isn't looking to hand over the first blue. Going to go for the energy regen. Korean junglers do, of course, crave the blue, as everyone does in the jungle. But won't be giving it over to Faker. He's going to be looking for a more aggressive route, and he's actually, so far, not spotted. Yeah, Uzi and Mata have been pushed up so aggressively in this lane. Prey just level two, but the minion wave is actually dying at about the right time. So even though he would be ganking into a wave, it would still be doable. So like they kind of know something's up there. They've played back a little more, and this could be trouble. Well, they both have all summoners, so... Well, there's actually exhaust on to Mata, man. Life going to look for it as well. Uzi trying to fight Prey on the back end, but Mata's taking a lot of damage on the other end. Now Uzi takes the lance out, hook it on to Mad Life, clear up down as well. So Flay is back onto the Tom Kench. He's forced to flash out as Mad Life has to run, but Bengi taking damage as he'll shift away. Clear up though, flashes in, wants the kill, looks for clear up as Wayless down as well. First blood to Mata, double play back, and now Wayless going to try to clear them up. Prey gets one of the backs over. Bengi looking to go down as well. Oh, Last throw is there, and there's the double for Wayless. Really big stuff here for the LPL. No counter roam by Faker. He's second to the roam. Wayless gets the bot. Didn't even have the ghost, but this looked good at the start, but it's so tricky to lock down Ezreal and Thresh. Both of them opened up space. Yeah, Mata and Uzi played this beautifully. Uzi does as much damage as possible on the back and then takes the lantern. So also notice how no flashes were burned early for Ice, which makes this chase so much easier coming through. Then, they also had the Cinder roaming down. He's a walk all the way there. He doesn't even bring Ghost. He tried to predict on the stun, didn't actually get it, but they were so far ahead on the play that they still managed to pick up the three kills. And roaming ahead of Faker is something that teams were doing consistently in the LCK. I came into Worlds talking about how SKT's form hadn't been great. Very often, Faker would say, rooted in mid, pick up and hit some extra CS, and his opponent would ghost to other lanes and get the advantage. The fact that Wayless did it without ghost, and look at this, even picks up a blue buff, it was high risk, you could argue, giving up a minion wave to Faker, giving up an experience advantage to Faker. When you pick up two kills, you feel pretty damn good about them. Well, he was pushing in. He's got some speedier boots now as well with the Salt Shoe. So things looking good for Wayless and a potential roam strategy. We've got a revolver on Faker side, but Wayless back in bottom again. Chilling Flashes. quite down onto Mad Life. Mata, Wayless is, and Wayless is here again. Oh! oh. Mata, lands it in Mad Life. He's going to give him both. Hooks in onto the Tom Kench. He's going to look to go down. Stone will fall in, but they won't break. There's one for Uzi. There's two. Uzi grabs the double this time. The layering of the spells was so good from LPL. No CC was wasted. Held on to the hook till they saw the commitment on the W from Tom Kench. Poetry in motion from LP. LPL. Absolutely, but you also have to take into account that there weren't good wards in the river there. To get four people there once again, really the LCK just kind of caught sleeping and it's really hurting them in the mid and the bot lane. It's pretty telegraph stuff, tough up stuff as well. Yeah, they're going to spot Faker. 
Good ward. Haven't seen Benki just yet, but he will take away the Grunt Mouse. Playing intelligently back. Both top laners burnt TP pretty aggressively to lane. But Whaler's starting to shadow up to that left side. It's going to force Faker back after he's pushed the wave. And Mad Life's here to collect some creeps for some reason. He'll donate a couple back over to Faker. But early game's certainly gone well. 5-1 up in kills already at six and a half minutes. I hyped up the Whaler's versus Faker battle. These guys are known to play for their lane. Whaler's isn't a big roamer. You would take Summer Spell Teleport and kind of try to be the team player, but would be anchored to lane. Love the 1v1. Appreciated no junglers if possible, but actually he's been on the front foot this game, yeah. and that's great to see the adaptation from Whalers. Not to mention the early Sorcerer Shoes makes his level 6 threat so high. Oftentimes you'll see the Syndra back early on a lost chapter because sure. that just gives you the mana to kind of shove out the wave. When he goes the early Sorcerer Shoes, that does speak to just wanting to immediately try and kill. And as you said, roam all the way to the bottom. And the bounty also picking up the blue buff with those early two kills as well. So he didn't have the immediate mana problems. He loves here, he's oh, level six. Sun missed, and I think that telegraphs that Faker has to know something might be amiss. He's got ulti and both summoners up as well, including the exhaust. So Clear Love, I think maybe thinks better of it. He's gonna have Faker shadow toward him, but Clear Love's just gonna duck out of vision, kind of see what happens and tell the bottom lane that Faker's coming, which may be the most important thing. And now they'll spot oh, that actually does not reveal Evelyn. It's normal sight and wards only. They did ping her out, however, so they are suspicious of it, for sure. And Faker's roams have generally been pretty ineffective this game. Out-roamed early on by Wales, for sure. The thing, you get pushed in all the time. It's really hard to leave your lane when you have to clear the creep waves out. Bengi's again back in bottom. Mad Life's going to get flayed back once more, but there's a couple of trades here and there. Bengi's dipping down with ultimate, but no flash going to make that a hard play to convert on, and Uzi and Mata will keep the wave back. Yeah, as you mentioned, it would require kind of a kick flash to really get them out of Room away from the turret to actually pick up a kill. So low percentage gank from Bengi is not rewarding. And he's in vision and in general. Feels like the LPL have shadowed the LCK very well, made their own plays, but also a pretty good idea of exactly where uh, the LCK has been playing. Yeah, and it helps when you can see exactly where they are mm -hmm. uh, with your deep wards as they refresh them. Now, Mata able to get that incredibly early sight stone after the kill, so he's been able to kind of cycle through this, and if they get the smite, they can also steal a boost, so that'll hurt Faker as well, Benny. But that's also because of the pressure Wayless has put down. It feels like they have the confidence to roam first to ensure that now Faker is punished both in terms of being against a 2-0-2 opponent and not having blue because LCK is being dictated to. And credit, of course, the top lane. We haven't seen much of it because it is that tank fest that we've seen, but Mouse did avoid the first three-man dive there, even on CS, and have really just been kind of playing back and forth in the lane. Bengi again looking behind Faker to try and make something happen, but Clear Love here as well. And it does feel like the Evelyn's back. Clear Love always known for being in the right place at the right time, shadowing very nicely as Faker it does take some harass. It's a vintage martyr, you have to say, as well. His wards, of course, not the same ward economy that he was famous for in 2014 when there weren't that same... Uh, situation where you can put down as many wards as possible. But the oh my great. god, good eight from Mad Life. That is what Tom Kench does. We're all excited about the hook, and Mad Life says no thank you. Still, though, with Curd the Colossus, Mod is able to play a lot more aggressive in this lane on the fresh, and I'm looking forward to see if he can do some of those flash plays and team fights to get a four or five man Curd shield. There we go, hook the thresh, get him low, so that if you land a hook, the heat isn't the Ray still with ultimate, does take a Q there from Uzi, but he's a little low on mana. So it'll just be some trades back and forth. Prey a little dangerous there, but should be okay with man left. Able to gobble him back up again. A quick correction, I was wrong. Skry's Bloom does in fact reveal the Evelyn, so there was knowledge down there. And looks like everyone kind of avoided that last little bot lane situation, but mid lane and bot lane, 202 and 203 for Wayless and Uzi, respectively. These lanes are going fine, the top lane is going even. This is perfect for LPL. Yeah, and you really just have to look at the minimap to see where the game is going. The control wards are in the river for ice, and they're non-existent for fire, except for one defensive control ward in their own jungle. This is very rare to see in any Korean game on the international stage, but early on, at least, at the All-Star event, we're seeing LPL do it. And speaking of rarities, it's not often that the Ezreal is the one pushing in the enemy AD carry, but with all that control, so risky for Prey and Madlife to push up anywhere near the river, and thus, basically, then Uzi and Mata having their way in bodies. Here oh, we go! kicks Wireless back in, but he's gonna flash out of the way. Faker, we're gonna chase him down, does take it, and Mouse gonna cancel that TP. Clear one clear lock we'll too. by Smeb, and there's the ultimate coming back. Oh. Great job from Faker, there's a kill again for Bengi. Just a clean turn right there by Faker and Bengi. Immediately killing Wales. Doesn't matter that he's still a flash. Mata goes in though. Smeb's coming down, so this could be problems. Mata getting exhausted. Uzi has to run away. Prey is going to take him down with the ultimate. Uzi looks like he'll escape this one. 
Bengi's looking for a dive. Well, maybe not then, actually. He's going to have to care. fight his way out. He's just going <laughs> to take it up, gets the courage shield, and Bengi gets himself another kill. And LCK turns it on so quickly, but the big story is that Smeb made it to mid without having to use his teleport. The Poppy had to cancel teleport. But Smeb, you can see on your screen, goes for a walk. We're, of course, focused on Wayless going down, but Smeb turns his attention, spots clear love. Love had revealed himself by popping his W for movement speed to try and be involved with Wayless, and then across the map. This is just a disaster for LPL. It really is. Mata's looking aggressive, but Uzi's out of mana right here. They do not have the teleport advantage with Mouse already burning his to top lane. Oh, no. No. But a break, Liv <laughs> gonna get a kill, so a little lazy there. Gonna get Prey taken down, but Bengi gonna hop away onto Mad Life and be safe, and LPL at least adds a one kill back, but all of a sudden, LCK are back in front by gold. It's not by much, it's under 1,000, but given the LPL were up 2,000 gold before, first start going to LCK changes a lot. Yeah, 2,000 gold in six minutes, and this was almost kind of the story of a lot of games at Worlds where we'd see the LCK go ahead by 2,000 and say, oh, the game is over, no way you can come back on that, yet you would routinely see them come back from 2,000 gold deficits, and it was just plays like that. They know where they can get their advantages. Faker wasn't necessarily behind, Bengi wasn't necessarily behind. They killed the most fed member right away before he could use his spells, and they channeled so much of their advantage off of him. Also an adjustment of how uh, specifically the Mouse vs. Smurf matchup was going. We, all, we expected it to go, of course, it didn't end up happening at Worlds, but we thought, okay, such a mismatch in terms of just individual skill, gank the lane, put him behind us. Faker has ulted here. Good dodge, Protobelt in as well. Faker gonna get stunned under the turret. Ulti's gonna take him down. No, not quite. There's enough as the W won't connect. Mata here as well as Clive's kind of going, but Bengi making a big play flash up from under Smeb's hook as Uzi gonna try and take one down. Mouse has joined the fray as well. Looks for the ulti. Finds Bengi there with a knockout, but Smeb gonna be the one flayed back. But clearly, the Wayless is so low. Uzi cutting back as best he can as there's a good double stun from the Cinder, but Prey looking to unleash the ulti. LPL playback. Smeb is already absurdly tanky. Expect a lot of that between Mouse and Smeb this game. I, I want to speak a little bit about Faker, though, at the early part of that play. He didn't go for the GLP build. We saw him practicing the worlds, but a Proto Belt is fairly common for the Ari, and it can still be decent against the Cinder because it gives you that little shot of health. It's pretty high CDR, so he should be able to cycle his ult very quickly, and he didn't actually have to burn his exhaust despite absorbing the ultimate from Wayless. So I think he's feeling pretty comfortable in that match. He's got that Sapphire Crystal, though, so there's kind of a couple of options to go into the GLP, the Lich Bane, both build out. Could still be a lost chapter into a Morella Nomicon, so yeah. has a lot of options there, but clearly going to be something fun coming next. And Smep, it hasn't been about his lane. This guy who was voted, of course, the best player going into Worlds, it's been about his roaming around the map. Nautilus is a pick. He played quite a lot for the Rocks Tigers, and just his map movement has been far superior to that of Mouse. I think that early roam from top to mid lane really demonstrates that as Wayless and Faker was going up again. Prey's actually looking for the ambush here and now going to get the cast down. Faker going to look for the charm he lands. It's Prey's going to get stunned, but Faker probably about him to death. One little thing you can see about Faker that's different to x Becker, who played the Ari yesterday, he maxes the charm seconds. It has the lower cooldown, hit the charm. That was enough time to open up, uh, Prey to open up and do damage. Mid turret goes down as well and Suddenly, despite all the roaming advantages that Wayless has been able to put up, Baker's doing just fine. Yep, mid turret going down as well just adds to the pressure they can hopefully get on the map. You can see the control wards have been moved up for fire as well right now, so they're feeling pretty confident after it was a bit of a disaster early. Well, I hope you'll have an Infernal Drake yeah, picked up the first one, and there's another one on the way, so trade of objectives isn't too bad, but we've seen what happens when you can't consistently get turrets in the mid game as you really just get smothered out of a game, and that was a big feature of LCK versus pretty much anyone else in their games is that they were able to claim those important objectives and keep it going, but here's the teleport to make something up. Here's happen. Mouse's chance to roam. Does have his ultimate, so he might try and lock someone down. Frey knows he has to get out. Oh, interrupted. Mad Life still gets, has him in his belly, though. There's the flash out. The ulti going to chase him down, but Clear Love gets one. Mad Life sure to go down as Clear Love does take him out, but Prey flash cast up out from under the turret, and that might be enough at will to get him to safety. A bit optimistic to try and ult away. Any damage interrupts the Abyssal Voyage. That certainly wasn't going to work, so only one, and they invested the whole team to try and chase them down. Yeah, considering it was a five-man gank, I'd say having just Mad Life go down, pretty good. The fact Prey was able to stay alive is a bit of a miracle since that gank started near the Tier 2 of the LPL, and he was able to escape up the With the Sheen, it will be Lich Bane Ari. It's important to know that every cast of the ultimate from Ari counts as a separate spell for a Lich Bane proc. So if you can weave in 
those auto attacks, you can get a lot of damage. I believe it was many reason in Korea the years ago that pioneered Lich Bane Ari, but it's so specific in the play style, it's very different. But it's cool to see it nonetheless hit the rim. You can see Smeb they're actually working the turret with Mouse down in that bottom side using the teleport. Smeb now will have Tippy advantage once again, and he almost took out that top adder as well. The big thing about that gank for me is that there's no turret damage really that could be done after it. So LPR are going to kind of play a little bit from behind here, despite the goal being relatively close, unless they can find a way to open up the map a little more. Because we've seen it time and time again. They're going to the LCK will take over and just grind you to a pulp. Yeah, and I'm hoping this game evolves into some pretty explosive team fights. But uh, praise good to be happy here. Mouse. Good knock up. Mouse looks for the hook. Finds it onto Smab as he flashes out of the way. Clear loves here. Gonna get ulted. In fact, Mouse gonna eat the knock up there as well. Madoff and Fake are gonna join in as well. And the Abyssal Voyage as Bengi's already taken out. Clear love. Mata gonna die on the other end as Smab able to claim that kill. Uzi fighting as best he can, but he'll just get CC between almost every member of the team. And Mouse, he'll get away safely, but that's about all the good news. Rotations is in the word that has always been associated with the LCK. Changes to Abyssal Voyage make them easier. Wasn't sure because I wasn't focusing on the minimap whether it was going to be Prey or Faker, but Faker comes in, hops the ult, they pick up kills. Going to pick up a Rift Herald just as the icing on the cake, and it's looking very, very different. First five minutes of so good for the Chinese squad, and even this engage, they thought they had something and very quickly did not. Yeah, knockups on knockups as Bengi kicks them back, then Smeb also. Clear Love goes down without really doing much, and then even though Uzi did have Flash, so did everyone on fire, so he doesn't bother flashing over the wall as his demise was pretty much set. Yeah, Faker's position was really smart. He actually moved Rex to the wall, still had another charge of his ultimate, so good to spirit good. rushed over. Wouldn't even have to invest his flash, so no way for Uzi to get out. Dies with both summoners up, and gold lead, look, it's still in touching distance, but certainly has been a big swing since the first salvos were fired by LPL. Can confirm that Smeb was the recipient of the Rift Herald buff, so he will have that. Marta will not get his favorite buff this time around. Faker though, just gonna continue to push this out. Should have a nice injection of gold after those early kills from the LCK. Next Drake is up in under 20 seconds, and you can see Ice are setting up for it on this right-hand side. You're gonna try and look for something a little more, though, as I would love to get a pick beforehand. Uzi, relatively strong at this point, has a lot of components, but they're pretty good, and looks like the first turret's gonna go over as well, as Uzi able to take down that bottom outer turret. Finally, the LPL gets on the board with turrets. Uzi definitely going to the Triforce build. Sneb, though, does have Teleport. But not able to pick Benji off that. And he's actually just going right back in. Yeah, Clear Love going to try and cover, but Mad Life's there to give a ward to Benji to hop to effectively. I mean, Benji's four levels above Marta, so he's actually feeling pretty comfortable at his damage. Thunderlords, of course, is the mastery now. Only since does more damage than previous seasons. This is a little risky. Very risky, I would say, as Mouse slams Mad Life into a wall. Not a bad target, but he's pretty tanky as Smeb. Still with the teleport, can join if needed. Mouse has come down already, but they're going to maybe start a 50 50 here, and they have to be careful. You'd think Ice would concede this, uh, but Team Fire doesn't actually have to do anything super aggressive now since they have Smeb pushing in the side lane. As soon as Ice all commit in the Dragon Pit, Fire can just open up with Prey's Twitch ultimate, and then they can teleport in with Nautilus. So the longer they do this dance, though, the better it is for the LCK. You see that red ward, the terror that will be created by a Nautilus coming in right now. That's going to TP in, and Benki looks for a big kick. Smarter oh. hits the mouse. No, not quite connecting. His mouth is going to block the rest of the team. Charges up the ulti. His fake is on the left-hand side for the flank, and LPL runs straight towards the bottom of the map. And even though Mouse has teleport, it's going to be an Infernal Drake for sure. It's only going to match the first one from LPL, although Ice, they yep. left to contend. Clearless still has ultimate. They want to fight. He wants to steal it. Clearless going to look to go back in the pool. Off the dragon. There's a hook left in it to Mad Life. Mouth slams him into a wall. The bank is going to get the dragon, but Tom will fall down. Now Clearless up in the backside. Trying to take down Prey. Mouse is there as well, but Faker doing so much damage in that back end. Oh. The ulti barely misses from the Ezreal. Two down there versus two. Very close fight, and the Dragon did go over to Korea. Yeah, got the Dragon, but as you could see, it was a very close fight. Prey didn't have his ultimate, or at least wasn't able to get the most value out of it. Two items not completed yet either for either AD carry. Things still very close despite the gold. Yeah, Faker nearly 1v3'd on the back side of that fight, and Bengi now actually just trying to interrupt recalls as much as possible as Faker sheens down this <laughs> turret in the mid lane. You can see that replay here. We were focused on Clear Up. We could have got a 3 
four-man ultimate, but when the Ari enters the fight, that's when things really change. So they actually, actually corrals Weightless, Mata, and Uzi, and gets out. That's actually massive, the amount of space that was controlled. It felt like Faker was the poppy, because he was the one corralling the back line. He wasn't even playing tank. Going for Bengi again, though, he's been smited down. Wayless actually looking for the stun. Bengi, no flash, that does dodge out the next stun, but Wayless gonna keep chasing Whoa. him down. He's still there oh. at life. He likes the delivery and scaves his jungle off. Might be the right hand of God, but yeah. turns out he's pretty damn good on his own, is Bengi. I thought that might have been a bit of a replay of Wayless's Cinder yesterday, where he misses all his skill <laughs> shots and then just presses R and gets the kill anyway. <laughs> but Mad Life was luckily there to pull Bengi to safety after Bengi made that uh, nice escape act. Well, Blue Buff's gonna go over. Wayless was very short on mana in the last Dragon fight, so it won't be for the next engagement. And just to make things fun, we've traded the first two Infernals, and the next trick is an Infernal as well. So if those high-powered team fights are what you're looking for, gents, you're gonna get them, assuming this map opens up a little more. And the big objective for LPL is to get these outer turrets. When you're so far behind in turrets with an Evelyn, it's so hard to have the map pressure that Evelyn almost solo can during the laning phase when the lanes are a lot shorter. The, lane, the map is so open, the deep wards come down, all of these camps are going to be warded, and although Clear Love isn't spotted yet, it's two levels behind his opposition and rapidly moving away from relevance in this game. Yeah, and you can also see Praise Twitch, despite dying four times and despite having the early lane go so poorly, he still managed to get to Infinity Edge Hurricane about the same time Uzi hit two items. So if he gets a good spray and pray in any of these fights, that's just another thing that's in the advantage of the LT. Ooh, it's stunned, faking and get all in. Oh, he's oh! oh! There's the shutdown from Wayless. Not quite a solo kill. Somehow Ezreal crept in and got some kill involvement, but that's suddenly going to be a lot of pressure onto this mid lane turret. Rain Mad Life going to be walking up to try and cover it, but five men strong here for Team Ice. I hope you'll need this turret as well. We've talked about how they need that pressure. Wayless trying to zone them off with the spears. But they might need another way for it, and that could be very bad news. Uzi throwing in poke and weaving in auto attacks where he can. It's gonna be close. The last minion's gonna die. Hook on the bank. Oh, oh. Good connect there. Great in from Mad Life, but he's still gonna get stunned. Brace that ball somehow as Mouse. He's gonna look after Mad Life. Grace kid's not enough to save him. As they're just going off here, Wayless though. Hooked in by Smevers. They'll be able to dope between the turrets. Wayless gonna get knocked up there by the ulti, but Smevers hooked up again. Q gonna miss under the back end of the Syndra. They got the turret, they got a couple kills. Very nice dive. Huge playmaking there by Ice. It all starts with Wayless getting the stun onto Faker so he can get his full combo off. But then, the rest of Korea thought they'd be able to stick around and defend this very low turret. And watch the stun out of Wayless here. He doesn't oh. shoot for the lead, he shoots for the top catch because he knows that's where everyone is eventually going to end up. And he got a bonus. He got the, the Twitch as well, who was on top of the model of Tom Kench. He went down first, that was more wave clear gone. Smeb at this point isn't looking for a kill realistically. He's looking to just try and keep as much health on this inner mid lane turret as possible. That mission is a success, but I'm loving the seesaw we're seeing because this match is certainly not in the books yet. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit tougher in the late game for the LPL to cut through Nautilus and Tom Kent specifically in those fights, but if they keep getting picks like this and can get the damage away from the LCK before the front line can really take effect, that's going to be their window into winning this game. Well, Baker forced to blink away, and Wayless is chasing for the ulti. Uzi shifts forward, looking for a little bit more LPL. Four man strong as Mata Flash up, finds Mad Life stun chain in there as the play is good. Mad Life barely gets the shield up, but it's not enough for Clear Love as he does take him down. This pick comp is doing exactly what it was made for. It was a very early draft of the Thresh. Early laning phase, big check mark for Mata. Died a couple of times in the mid game, but now as the mid game starts to enter its later phases, the playmaking is real. Yeah, and they've been pretty choosy with who they're killing. It's specifically the bottom lane. 11 of the 13 deaths on the LCK have been that bottom lane, so that's exactly who the rest of the LPL are shooting for. Yeah, Smep was worried there about getting collapsed on, so just teleported to his inner turret. Does mean that Mouse has a teleport advantage, and as this game is suddenly Got a bit more to it for the LPL squad. They got an out of mid lane turret. They're going to keep pushing in mid. They can park Poppy in a side lane. Just try and play the map pressure game for the next five minutes. Got the top turret as well as Bengi will be spotted by a control ward. So the game is getting close to even as LCK are only 2,000 gold up. 45 seconds to the next Infernal Drake as well as we are going to have to start taking a look at the big mid game item spikes. Uzi working on kind of his third item there, but had a pretty cheap one to start as Bengi leaps in, but he'll be safe this time. Add Thrash, oh, sorry, the, the uh, Twitch in camouflage to give him a exit with his W. So, nothing ventured, nothing gained there. Baker was doing his split pushing act, was top, but has backed here. Doesn't have his third item yet, will be Death Cap coming for too long, as the junglers 
in the same quadrant, but not spotting each other just yet. Yeah, so much of this is going to be about the pre-fight picks because everyone's going to want that next Inferno Drake that spawns here. Baker just now coming from base, so fire while they are in the jungle. It was really kind of dangerous being there, but here we go. They get a lot of damage on a mouse. Yeah, Lantern out, so that cooldown not available for about 15 seconds there for Marta, but mouse didn't take too much damage. 25% health of a poppy is decent though for LCK, and the Drake is ready and alive, so let's see what happens. And the big thing here is if they can kite out specifically Twitch sold him, that'd be big, because Marta takes a big burst. Ooh, mouse looked again, but he didn't get the shield. Smeb looking for something, but it's just poked back. Nobody wants to damage down the tanks. Yeah, Mata also burned his redemption fight right there, so add that to the poke he took afterwards, and it pretty much just needs a full concede on the Infernal Drake. Man, three Infernal Drakes to start. What was always going to be a fiery one is, uh, letting us know that the damage is starting, starting to rack up, specifically Frey will be the big recipient here. Looks like he might be going last with for next, just to have hope in hell of being able to do damage to the poppy. Baker even covering a mid after that play as well, so LPL tried to get something back, but of course, the LCK have covered that. We'll lose nothing off of that play. Faker now going to get himself the blue buff. His mouse returns to the top side of the map, and Smith's going to go back and likely return to at least challenge the wave as it comes forward. And last was for Don Feruzzi, it means that these damage items are really starting to rack up quickly. And the most fun thing is, you know, as Jad said, this is very much pick comp versus pick comp, especially where we're at in the game. Ari and Syndra really let you know that. It's skill shots everywhere. Line skill shots, CCs to start fights, so, okay. Nautilus can kind of ruin that parade, walk in and depth charge someone, but everyone else is fishing for initiation. So when you have that kind of skill execution required on both sides, it means that theoretically, the better team should win. Yeah, it actually makes me very surprised that Ice hasn't swapped out for more sweepers. Only having one sweeper 27 minutes of the game is actually really rare, and you would need kind of five control wards on the map at all times to have any semblance of vision denial in order to get picks, but they haven't necessarily done that, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually get picks onto fire. Well, we can see teams are, of course, setting up for the Baron now because the last Infernal Drake was taken down. Next one's an Ocean, which is a little less exciting, but unfortunately, we can only have three Infernal, even here at All Stars. We didn't change that knob. No. <laughs> Drake's a fire, Drake. It's All Stars. No. Maybe for next year. Wasn't in the script. There's Void stuff been picked up for Wayless as well. So Strength has really come out on the big carries for both sides here. Big and 80 carry on either side are looking good. It's got a bit of damage. Actually, a Protobel Eve, which I do like. Oh, pull the Wayless to Wayless, kicks him back in. Faker collects it, and there's a shutdown. The follow there was so important. Went for the aggressive bash. They got the kill. 5v4, but what will Fire do with the advantage? 40 seconds on the respawn from Wayless. Well, it looked like Wayless actually flashed a little bit early yep. because he was hoping that Bengi would come. Complete his resident strike. Then flash over wall. Another pick. Baker looking for it, but Mata gonna get taken down. Bangy now unstoppable. Because that's two for LCK. And again, the dance around Baron will just keep going. There's some vision in the area, but it's only three members strong. So what exactly can Ice do? What kind of dance is it really going to be if it's only three people? Yes, man, running interference on the mid lane as well. So has spotted them. Four man bam for LCK. Should be fine. Clear up. Going to try and steal it. There's a bit of vision from the Ezreal as Mouth looking to get in there. Clear up. Trying to find something as well. But Mouth's going to go down here as he's caught by Smed Prey. Able to collect that one in the Baron. Awfully low. Clear up. Not in range to steal it. And they took a lot of damage, but that's a pretty clean Baron. I mean, there's not better, many better uh, top laners than the Nautilus to be the gatekeeper of a Baron when you have a two man advantage. Just walks has so many CCs, including a point and click. The contesting just wasn't really realistic. If you watch, Wayless tried to time the flash, didn't get it, and then Bengi was, was counter flash. Bengi actually yeah. had the flash for the flash kick to confirm the kill for Faker. Yeah, so poorly done a little bit by Wayless, but obviously the threat of the immediate kick flash is going to make it a very tight timing of wanting to get it right away. Bengi, the beneficiary, very strong game on recent from him. Even in, even in slow motion, it was hard to tell with the following of the yeah. queue whether the flash Because you still saw the flash bar yeah, go from exactly. Wayless, and you're like, was it Bengi's flash? <laughs> no, it was not. He used it like a second. Yep. Later. Well, D Fake has also got their Abaddon, so he's certainly piling up. As far as picks go, there's there another go. one as Wayless. He's going to go down again. Who left time in that side lane is Mata. Maybe he's got also Redemption down. Mad Life is the target, but he's pretty tanked. Kill the Uzi. There's a good chunk of damage. Faker protobots towards him as the lantern's out, but everyone's safe for now. And that Baron empowered means from the LCK going to make this seed real difficult to try and crack. And of course, down bottom, we can see with the teleport still up, Smeb level 16 pushing those minions in with a Baron buff of his own. Usually Nautilus, not really known for his turret pressure, but with the Iceborne Gauntlet complete, the mouse not in the lane. The bot lane turret gold continues to rack up for LCK. 
Yeah, and I do want to speak very quickly to Faker's build right now, because a lot of people like having Void Staff a little earlier in a build, but specifically on this Ari, I don't think it's necessary. So there's AP ratios on both the Lich Bane and the Proto Belt, and then also his Q does true damage on the pass through. So because he's racking up so much AP, he's really increasing his total AP ratio so much more with the build on top of everything. So I really like that combination of items. And just simply, the wave clear's not too great on the side of fire, so flat ability power much more superior for pushing waves and Faker's in the side lane, Smeb's in the side lane. Faker never needs teleport to enter a side lane. It's just his play style. So, I'd AP, and as you say, all the hidden AP ratios and true damage deprioritizes the Void Star to probably six item slot. After the big back and forth, thank you. I like it. It's twice now that he's kind of outthought Mato on the potential hook. But uh, what was a close ish game has become not particularly close at this stage. Almost 8k up for LCK with all three lanes pushing in now. Maybe caught here, but Hook onto my life's gonna have some damage. Down to charge lands on onto Whalers, so he's gonna get back to the safety of his Tara. LPL need to defend here, but they just got mid lane broken. Just playing the map so smartly here. Fire a couple more auto attacks. There is gonna be the mid lane inhibitor. Smam not done in bot either. Well, Mouse is taking a lot of damage, so he's gonna have to be careful. That bound cannon creep is causing trouble as the Twit oh. and the Lich Bane are just gonna melt this Tara. Bengi's caught, but he's not gonna die there either. I don't wanna commit on a a target that's not a big carry, but kind of running out of things to try and kill here. I mean, at this point, Smeb takes no damage from anything. We're not going to see those Titans Wrath shields, especially if Courage of the Colossus is proc going down anytime soon. Not to mention, one of the less talked about changes of this season is the turret lasers are gone, and it's just the normal shots again, which really just kind of brings back the turret diving and the base diving, because once you do get a little bit tanky, you can essentially ignore those turrets, and that's exactly what the LCK was able to do there, very efficiently opening up the second game. And the Ezra, look, good laning choice, a good blind pick, doesn't do much against Guardian Angel for tank item normal. It's not a tank buster like his off Ozen number in Twitch, so although he'll be able to keep alive Uzi, it's gonna have a field day trying to do any damage past the wall that is smashed. Well, Ocean Drake's gonna go down, and that means Elder will spawn as our next one. LCK are also officially 10,000 gold ahead in this game after breaking two inhibitors and the turrets that went with the mid and bottom lane looking awfully vulnerable and it's just that top side left. We kind of expect them to do this academically like they almost always have and if uh, there's ever been a word to describe the top Korean teams, I think clinical comes to mind and that should be exactly how this game ends. We'll see if LPL have any answers down very far behind. Still praying Smep there, rocking the Rocks Tigers though. They weren't necessarily clinical. They made some clinical aggressive plays but they weren't the surgical team that SKT was, so wait, but I don't think they need to reply too much creativity. They're so far ahead. Just look at Faker against the full tank poppy, chunking him out. And now Clear Love, oh. and maybe some few friends. Faker gonna take damage, Proto belts away. Clear Love wants to chase him down! Hey. But the pass through is gonna proc the G, and Faker gets out. And there we go, and Meanwhile. Hitler number three able to come down. You almost thought Faker was gonna be able to get caught, and if you're the LPL, you think flanking behind his Evelyn is a good choice, but Faker now back in base, could maybe catch him in the fourth spot. Caught Smap! Did you? There's not much <laughs> to really do there. That was the most life. excited I've ever heard someone talking about catching a Nautilus. Jimmy, down as well. Mad Life saves it, but the fight's gonna break out. Uzi gets demolished in the front line, but will blink himself to safety. Had to burn the flash to do so as Ice is still trying to fight their way out. Bengi slammed into a wall, will go down, but Syndra's fallen as well as Smeb. Just takes almost no damage. Uzi gonna try and take him down. He's a little bit more and that will pop the GA. He'll be back. But he's still got more to go. Man life's here again to eat him down. Mouse just gonna get himself locked up and this is tough to watch. Man life gonna cobble the poppy. Smeb's gonna CC him forever <laughs> and that's just unfair. Depth charge to death, but look at the oh, super the minions. minions. No, they don't have enough damage. And the only way the game could end is the win. Minions, LCK will take down LPL. <laughs> well, that was an ending to cap off what was a really fun game. LPL at two moments in the game were ahead, specifically early, and they tried, started to crest ahead or come back in the mid game, but otherwise, kind of business as, as usual for the LCK squad. Yeah, Faker, a little sad he didn't make it in the last fight. He had to proc through the <laughs> GA, then the rest of the team just tank fought their way to victory with the minions. But as you said, Papa Smithy, a pretty fun game. A, it was an ending, for sure, as far as minions are concerned. And I'd like to see the Ari come out as well. Yeah, it was great to see a couple different picks there. Again, Uzi, we talked about the Nautilus. He's a huge tank, he's very difficult to kill. He's certainly not a tank buster on the Ezreal. No, would have busted through that tank, Bubba Smithy. The vein. 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 <laughs>